Welcome back to Emulating Pushkash, where today it is episode 9, and the players are aged 29 years old now, so they get into that point in their career where they're going to have to purchase a Zimmer frame to get around the pitch. As always, please show your support for the series by smashing the like button, that would be much appreciated. Now the next video in the series will be an Emulating Pushkash Extra video. If you didn't watch Emulating Messi Extra, basically what I did was I went down every single player and looked at them in a lot of detail. So the videos were about an hour and a half long because I'd look at every single player, look at their history, look at which clubs they've played for and international career and what they've managed to win in their career. So that's what I want to do. The players are going to be aged 30 years old when I do that, so I'll holiday one more season and then I will do Emulating Pushkas extra so keep an eye out for that in the coming days so since episode 8 we've holidayed three years so a lot has gone on in their career now they're coming towards the end of their prime this is when they're at their best I would say age 28 29 those are the best years as a footballer but it can soon end can't it when you hit your 30 some players continue to flourish and others just drop off a cliff like a lemming as you can see here we've got a few players that have 200 current ability I think there's less than last time, but there's lots of players over 199 and plenty of players over 190 and still huge numbers over that magic number of 175, which I always say is world class ability wise. Kenneth Kennison still being wonderful, Sean Watson, Floyd Leonard, Daniel Carter II, Boris Johnson and Harry Dagobati all still on 200 current ability and doing incredibly well. If we go to the bottom though, Joel Suto, the sweeper. Unfortunately, has only 115 current abilities, really dropped off. He's been at PSG his whole career, but he's never really broken into that first team. He's just been a reserve team player for all those years, and it's quite strange, really, looking at him. He's stayed in the reserves that whole time, never been capped by Portugal, apart from the under-21 level. Then we've also got Livin Libero Loca. Our other sweeper who couldn't find a club for ages but eventually moved to DC United. Oh, look at that gap. He last played with Valencia in 2021 then found DC United. And he's been playing a number of games in the MLS. Unfortunately not getting the best average ratings. But at least he has found a club. That is very pleasing to see. But everyone is above 130 current ability from Joe Suto. So I don't really know what's happened to him. It is a great shame. Moving on, let's look just at the club level so you can see. I'll just scroll down so you can have a look at the player that you support or your particular player so you can see the details and you can pause the video. We've got obviously a player playing in America now, but pretty much everyone else I think is playing in Europe. There may be the odd player playing outside of Europe if we just go down and find out. Ah, Ryan Ellel is playing over in Brazil now, but I think that's it. Let's go along the list then and see how the player's doing wage-wise, first of all. The top wage, I just need to scroll up now, is West and Christian Gopi, both earning £375,000 a week. Both of them are at PSG. They're the guys with the big money. Man City are next up with Morgan Kendall and Joel Bayford, but look, the top five players all play for PSG or Man City in regards to wages. Real Madrid also have money, as do Chelsea. You can see there they've got lots of players featuring in this list. FC Barcelona have only got a couple players featuring on the list. They traditionally pay a little bit less, I think, compared to Real Madrid. Value-wise, Hugh Ass and Alex Calabrese, both still worth £71 million. We haven't seen any player go above that £71 million mark, though. I don't think we've seen that in both series. In fact, I think 71 has been the top for every every single series we've seen. Worst value-wise is predictably Joel Suto at PSG. He's also probably one of the lowest wages. Living Libero Loca, £5,500 a week at DC United is the lowest, but everyone else earning over ten grand a, a, a week. Cause we're, so we're all rich men. I mean, even Living Libero Loca is now a rich man. Considering he was homeless for four years, he's now earning a decent, <laughs> very decent living. World reputation-wise, we've got plenty of players, loads of players, with four-and-a-half-star reputation, but we've not seen any players reach that five-star reputation that we did see on emulating Messi. The lowest reputation is Livin Libero Loca and Joel Suto with two stars. 
International caps then, Daniel Carter II has 162 caps for South Korea and 148 goals. He doesn't seem to be showing any signs of slowing down this guy. And perhaps he can reach 200 caps for South Korea. The game is now frozen. Come on. Literally just sat there for 30 seconds. Uh, the further you holiday into the game, it just becomes a bit laggy. He is an exceptional player for Juventus and for South Korea, where just so many caps, it's crazy. T, uh, TJD for China also has 143 caps, 68 goals as well, that is really impressive. Christian Gopi, 141 caps, there's loads of players with over 100 caps for their country. We'll have to go halfway down the list, look, all the way down to here. Noel Timothy and Thomas Ryan have now hit 100 caps each. There's probably a few players that have actually retired from international duty already. Players that haven't been capped, Paul Scholes Jr. just he never got off the ground, did he? The England player who 43 caps for the under 21 level, but never got into that first team. Really unfortunate. He's he's a decent player. He's earning where is he? He's he's vanished. Oh here he is. He's earning 77 grand a week. Worth six million, so he's not a bad player at all. It's just there's obviously better options than him. Uh, Ryan Ella, the Brazilian, and Joel Suto also haven't been capped. Uh, the lowest cap player that has actually earned caps for his country is Jack Tarnay, the Brazilian left back. Moving on to goals, then Daniel Carter the second is the highest number of goals. Kenneth Kennison, 129 goals in 109 games for New Zealand. Has he retired from international duty? Let's find out. Quite often. The players that get lots of caps for their country do tend to retire a bit earlier. No, he hasn't. Re no, he hasn't retired from international duty yet. He's still plugging away, getting goals. As is Christian Blanco for Honduras and Floyd Leonard, the Haiti, doing really well. Nua Salas managed to get over a hundred goals for New Zealand as well. In fact, his goals to game ratio is pretty impressive. Not as good as Kennison. 129 goals in 109 games. That is just insane. Has any other player got more goals in games? Hugh Jass has done really well for Scotland. Over 100 goals for Scotland. That is very impressive. All-time appearances then. West is leading the way with 670 club appearances under his belt. Alex Calabrese as well, 660. And Kenneth Kennison, 657. But look at all those players with over 600 appearances. Can they get to 1,000? We shall find out. Top goals wise at club level is Kenneth Kennison for Manchester United, 373 goals. Boris Johnson's record is actually slightly better though. Although he's got three less goals, he's played quite a few fewer games, 370 goals. Hugh Jass has also got over 300, 353 goals to be precise. And Just Downard has 305 in 641 games. The players that haven't scored for their club, goalkeepers, as you can see there, all the goalkeepers haven't managed to get a goal, but every single other player has. Jack Tarnay has got one goal in 565 games in his career. If we look at the most recent season then, Bryce Johnson got the most club appearances under his belt, 60 games. There's a few, like one player, Ben Savage, didn't play a single game, unless this is next sit well hmm wait MK Don signed him for 7.5 million oh he played for Bournemouth this season that's why and now he's moved to MK Don's he's moved around a fair amount in the last three years hasn't he 51 million pounds worth of uh, transfer fees he's raked up in his career the Australian legend goals wise Kenneth Kennison 40 goals this season and Boris Johnson 39 lots of goals going on and Lee Gamble got the most assists for Schalke he's still at Schalke 20 assists this season. Jedi Knight 19 from defensive midfield for PSG as well. They might be playing actual central midfield now, I guess. And clean sheets wise, Regan Connor for Inter Milan with the most clean sheets out of our goalkeepers. 27 clean sheets. Uh, MJ Pegasus, only 7 clean sheets for Torino. Average rating wise, Andreas Egg, the German defender, the left back or defensive midfielder who plays for Bayern Munich, 109 caps for Germany, that is very impressive. 8.11 average rating this season. Fergie Ferguson, the next best, lowest average rating. We haven't looked at this before, but it's actually Livin Libero Loka, 6.36. What was he doing at the back for DC United? Who knows? Oh, wow, this is a very impressive. South Korea have won. Look at the winners of the World Cup. Italy, then Sweden, and then South Korea. This is unbelievable stuff. We've we've only given them one player. Haven't oh we can't see the final, but Daniel Carter, I'm pretty sure is the only South Korean we've got. 
and he's actually managed to help them win the World Cup. He scored a hat-trick in the final. He's emulated Jeff Hurst. This is now called Emulating Jeff Hurst. This series, Daniel Carter has completed the challenge of emulating Sir Jeff. What a player he is. Did he score any other? He scored against Germany in the second round. So got two against Algeria and two against uh, Portugal as well. What a player he is. He's led South Korea to the World Cup. Unbelievable stuff, really. World Player of the Year award then. Bernardo Silva dominated, winning three in a row with Boris Johnson and Fergie Ferguson second and third. That was three years ago. But the following season, Daniel Carter, in the, the, the year that South Korea won the World Cup, Daniel Carter the second won World Player of the Year. What a career this guy has had. Uh, Memphis Depay, at the age of 32, was second. And Fergie Ferguson, third. Fergie Ferguson has done really well, actually. Quietly done really well. I haven't really focused on him that much because Kenneth Kennison has outshone him goal-scoring-wise. But he's managed to finish third twice in World Player of the Year. And also for a third season in a row. Boris Johnson has managed to win World Player of the Year t for the second time. What a player this Swedish guy is. This blonde beautiful man 117 caps for Sweden 76 goals but for Real Madrid he's been a superstar and he's managed to win two world player of the year awards let's look at the set if it's the same for world golden ball I believe it is Fergie Ferguson was second though three years ago and then he was third with Daniel Carter the second winning it and then Bryce Johnson winning it with Kenneth Kennison finishing third so a bit different for World Golden Ball. And World Team of the Year then. Last three years, let's go back. We saw Calabrese, Rosmus, Lee Gamble, Kennethson, Boris Johnson, Fergie Ferguson, Jace Cannon, and Daniel Carter the second in World Team of the Year. Then the following year we saw Simon Wakefield in there. I think that's the first time. Andres Egg, Fergie Ferguson, Josh Downard, Sander Chileman, Daniel Carter the second, Boris Johnson, Ben Kearney, and West in there. Obviously Daniel Carter the second up front because he won World Player of the Year and also he won the World Cup. So it wouldn't make any sense for anyone else to be up there. And then the season just got, well, 2027. Yeah, there's no 2028 yet. Uh, Simon Wakefield in defence. Andreas Egg once again. Fergie Ferguson. Boris Johnson. Kenneth Kennison. Josh Downard. Simon Thomas. He's not one of our players, is he? He's a... Uh, the ex-Blue Peter presenter. Lee Gamble next. West. And that's it. I, think, I wonder who's in the overall list at the moment. We've got Calabrese and Rosmus and Egg and Fergie Ferguson and Boris Johnson. And that's it at the moment. But by the end of every player's career, it might be a bit different. If we just look at reputation-wise for the clubs, you can see Barcelona then. Borussia Dortmund second. But Arsenal still the richest team in the world. And the Premier League, still the top division, uh, top league in the world. Rankings-wise, world rankings-wise, Brazil are top, Italy next. Where's South Korea? Down in 12th now. Sweden have dropped off. I can't see them. Where are they? Where's Sweden? Have I gone? Have I, I might be blind. I can't see them. Why can't I see them? They must be here, surely. There they are, 13th. They blow South Korea. Ugh. Can't believe I couldn't see that. If we have a look at the Champions League then, the last three years have been dominant, well, the last four years have been dominated by English clubs. Man United won it three years in a row. And then Chelsea managed to beat Real Madrid this year. So well done to Man United, who have been superb on this, but many thanks to their players, Kenneth Kennison and Fergie Ferguson. Euro Cup, slightly different. Roma, Benfica and Malaga have been the winners. Slightly different. It's very different winners. What am I talking about? But we didn't see any English dominance here. If we have a look at the Premier League then, you can see Chelsea, Man City and Man United are the last three winners of the league title. Kenneth Kennison, top scorer of Huja, second. Ferguson, top average rating. Toaster Strudel on the play of the match list. Joint first with nine man of the matches. We haven't really looked at him in these videos. You don't, I mean, we miss out so many different players because they're sort of in the middle, aren't they? They're not really at the top of the, the tables. He moved to Chelsea on a free from AC Milan. But that's why looking at the emulating Pushkas extra episode will be intriguing for some of you because you'll be able to look at all the players in a lot more detail. Once again, I've put the save file for the end of the 13th season in the description below for you to download and open up on FM16 if you so wish. 
Uh, championship wise, let's just have a quick look to see. MK Dons went up, and that's where Ben Savage has moved to since they've been promoted. Top of the table, Wolves and Huddersfield also promoted. Let's just look at La Liga, where Real Madrid have managed to win it this year, but Real, uh, Barcelona, the last two years, managed to win it. Boris Johnson, second top goal scorer. Uh, Rosmus and Boris Johnson on the average rating list, and Rosmus for the most yellow cards. He is a cracking player. Let's have a look at him because we haven't really done so. 79 caps of Poland. That's quite uh, not that many, really, considering how good he is. And he's been at Barcelona since 2018, where he moved 14.25 million. He's been a sensational player. He's been in World Team of the Year many times as well. Serie A has been won by Juventus two out of the last three seasons, but AC Milan managed to win it in 2026-27 season. Let's just have a look at this year then. Oh, Juventus ran away with it. Daniel the Carter the second on the average rating list yet there you can see. Jack Tane, the Brazilian left back on player of the match list. Uh, Regan Connor, second most clean sheets. And Noel Timothy's <laughs> joint most yellow cards for this Canadian guy. 100 caps for Canada. He's done really well actually. He's been around the block, hasn't he? Started at Montreal Impact, he's moved to Paris, he's moved to Middlesbrough, Fulham, Stoke and Palermo. What is going on there? I have no idea. And the German First Division, Bayern Munich's dominance really has been ended by Dortmund here and Schalke managed to win the league. Really good achievement for them because they had so good, so many good players, including Sander Chieleman and Lee Gamble who feature on these lists here. Lee Gamble has been sensational in this series once again. Only 52 caps for Fiji though, it's just, they just don't play enough games for him to really muster a, a really good international career. But he's been fantastic for Schalke. And Ligue 1, PSG have won two out of the last three seasons, but Monaco have come into it, haven't they, in recent years. They are pushing PSG all the way now, which is good to see some competition. We can see Tiki Taka, top average rating for Monaco. The guy from, where is he from? American Samoa. 48 caps for American Samoa. Once again, another nation that doesn't really play that many international games. It's a great story for him. Started at Melbourne City, moved to Sydney, but he didn't play for them before moving on a free to Monaco. Uh, he's turned out to be a very good player, hasn't he? Jace Cannon, second most clean sheets as well. He's just been a fantastic keeper on this. 105 caps for France. Could go on for another 10 years if he wants to. He is a goalkeeper. So that's the end of episode 9 today, guys. We've had a look at the players once again over the past three years. Some have continued to grow. Some are starting to decline now. They get into that stage. Of, they're about to hit 30, remember. So I'm going to holiday one more year and then record emulating Pushkas Extra, which is always a marathon, which is why I only wanted to do one this series. But I hope you're looking forward to that. Please smash the like button on this video, It'd be much appreciated. Uh, download the save file if you want to have a look at things in more detail on FM16. I will see you in the next video.